Hi everybody, I hope you're keeping well. This week the video is about galaxies because we're in April now and it's galaxy season. I started off with M101 and I came up with a reasonable image. I was reasonably happy with that. Um, and then I moved on to M51 and it's turned out to be a complete nightmare. Uh, my mount for some reason has um, started to play up with its guiding and the guiding curves that I've been getting in PhD2 have been rubbish. So I've taken it upon myself to try and fix the mount and I'll be showing you a little bit of that. Um, my two mounts are both EQ5s that I've got. Uh, one of them has the side scan go-to system and the other one has an Astra gadget system. And they're both really good mounts but for some reason my guiding on them is just awful. So I decided to try and eliminate some of the backlash on the mounts and this is where I got to. The first step in the process to remove the backlash is on the EQ5 Pro you very gently need to unscrew these two Allen screws here um, and to do this you need a 1.5 millimeter Allen key so you just unscrew those which is what we're doing here there we go and then this very gently slides off and you can see the gears and they're actually pretty good at the moment there's very little backlash in those they're not moving very much at all but I'm still going to take this apart and see if we can improve the backlash on this particular axis which is the declination axis. So the next thing to do is remove the stepper motor which is here and for that you need a four millimeter allen key. So just unscrew that making sure you hold it so it doesn't drop on the floor. There we go so that's off now and you can see here you've got three adjustments one two three and you've also got the retaining ones what you need to do is unscrew all of these so you just loosen them off so if that one just has to be loose that's all it has to be so you just loosen that on this one as well loosen that this one loosen that so now this is completely loose and you also need to just back off the grub screw that's in here as well which is back on the 2.5 millimeter allen key so you can now see that's nice and loose which is great so this is obviously really loose now you can hear that so you hold it in place with your thumb and with the four millimeter one you just nip these up so they're just tight to hold it but not too tight okay so now that's held in place and then what you need to do is tighten these up so they're just finger tight and then when you feel that it's actually got no play at all now but it's slightly too tight so what we need to do now is screw in that little grub screw which has the effect of pushing this worm gear which is in here just outwards so I'm going to do that now So there's absolutely no play in that now. That's perfect and it could still be moved with my fingers which is exactly what you want. And then, so there's no play at all there and then we just tighten these up. Don't over tighten them because this is only a cast alloy and it's very soft so you just want it to be gripping. And there we go. So I can move that with my fingers without any problems and there is literally no play in that at all, which is great. So the next step is to put the stepper motor back on. So we just line that up. And there's no play there, but you can twist it with your fingers. So I'm just going to tighten that up. Now that looks to be perfect. There's, I mean there has to be a tiny bit of play because it has to be able to turn. But the fact that I can turn that by hand tells me that that's absolutely fine. And there's no black clash in that at all. That's good. Great. So I think that's pretty much done. And we'll put the cover back on to protect the gears. So you just slide that back on. And then using 
our allen keys just nip it up remembering not to over tighten you just need it tight enough so they're not going to come undone there you go perfect and that's it so i'm now going to go and plug this in and we'll give it a quick test I've got the mount attached to astrophotography tool and I'm going to ask it to slew to somewhere. Okay, that's really good. I'm happy with that. That's slewing. Great, that appears to have slewed and it's working well. I started with M101 this week and I'm reasonably pleased with what I came up with in the end. The session went really well. I managed to image it over one night. I got about two and a half hours of data. Um, ideally, I'd like to add to that in future, um, but here's the process and here's what happened. Polar alignment, excellent. I don't think I've ever had an excellent, ever. Look at that. So here's M101. The final image is really noisy. I think this is because my mount's playing up and I'm not able to dither properly at the moment. And also two and a half hours of data just isn't enough. So I'd like to revisit this one and really put a few hours into it so I can minimize the noise and improve the image. But here we go, M101. I then moved on to M51 and this is where you get these two amazing galaxies which are colliding together and you sort of see the big galaxy and then the smaller galaxy which is being consumed by the other galaxy and unfortunately this is where my guiding and my mount just gave up. I managed to get one night of data from this but really to do it any justice I need to use the scope's native focal length so that the image is slightly bigger and also uh, it came down to my mount again. It just would not calibrate in PHD2 to give good guiding. Blue skies, okay. Day two and we're going to do our best. We're fully rigged already. So everything can cool down in time and hopefully Tonight we'll get a few hours on M51. You can see here, if I just lift up, you can see there's the street lamp. But what I've done is I've put a large piece of wood in the way, which basically puts the telescope into shadow, as always. And then we've just started imaging now. So let me bring you down here. 
So you can see on the screen there, M51. In the center there, which is what we're imaging at the moment. Now it's quite windy out tonight. Um, and I struggled a bit with getting guiding to be flat, really struggled. So you can see for every gust of wind, um, it's pushing the mount around. Although that's, that bit's dithering there, so it's pushing the mount around anyway. But you can see it took a while for it to settle. It does seem to be settling a bit there, although my guiding figures are not brilliant, as you can see. Clear that out and let's see what it goes to. Yeah, the guiding settled a bit. It's not. It's not amazing though. It's not as good as a couple of weeks ago. But um, you know, the images are vaguely okay. So I am taking 160 second exposures with gain 400 and I'll just take as many of those as I can fit in. So yeah, I'll report back. Exposure finished. Dithering started. There we go, so it's just finished that exposure and you can see a bit closer. You can see the spirals there of the galaxy M51. This is a single 160 second sub on M51. You can clearly see the two galaxies, they're interacting and uh, sort of tearing each other apart, which is amazing to see. It's really good. And of course, the customary uh, photo bomb of a satellite going across the image. I'm going to spend a few more hours on this. Um, I'm really pleased with the data I've got so far, even though I've got mount problems at the moment. Um, but I'm hoping to resolve those and then I'll be able to get a better image. I've still got some data to collect on M51 before I can come up with uh, what will be a finished image. But uh, yeah, thanks ever so much for watching. Please like if you can. It really helps the channel grow because it suggests in the YouTube algorithm this video and others on the channel um, to other people and I'm really keen for the channel to kind of grow as much as possible. Uh, but thanks for watching, stay safe and I will see you in the next one. Take care.